I've uh, made it back to lifeboat station here at Mundersley. Dropped all my rubbish off in the bin. It's a little bit lighter on the rucksack. And I've got about 750 mil flavoured water. So next sort of settlement we get to, whatever you want to call it, gonna have to get top up on some more water I think. But as you saw by them photos there, just back down there, we have to follow the diversion route because they're doing seascaping or sandscaping or something and that's what was going on at the Bacton all the last night. Hardy's gonna call me back in a minute and we'll arrange a meet up point and then yeah, I say I just want to make it to Haysborough at least by midday really. So I've got a good two hours of solid walking to do. I've got to really put my foot down today because yesterday I took my time a bit. I worked out I did about six and a half, seven mile. Hard work begins today. We've got to crack on with this. So enough talking, let's get bloody walking. <laughs> I just walked along the beach, which was hard going, into a headwind, and I was meant to walk along here, but I couldn't find where the path led oh, from the houses. So I've walked along the beach, and then I've suddenly seen some man-made steps cut into the side of the cliff face, and a rope tied around a rock. I've climbed up that with this weight on my back, and I've only come out at the bunkers and the pillboxes and the tunnels. I am, I am fucked. We're at Haysborough, we're on the outskirts. Apologies for the wind, it is pretty windy out today, which I'm actually grateful of because without it, it would be baking hot. Main thing is though, I've got water, I've got like two litres from a from a poacher's pocket pub back there. Had half a coke, as you saw, and yeah, they filled up two litres for me. So, we're all good for fluids for a while. But, from this point onwards, I've got about nine miles to get to Winterton, and it's one o'clock now. It's hard going, this. Just on sand, shingle. Right, I'm stopping here anyway because this is one of the things I've come to look at. Haysborough was the site of an emergency coastal defence battery. 
that was established in 1940 for two 4.7 inch ex naval guns manned by 353 Coast Battery Royal Artillery. This replaced an earlier battery for 6 inch guns at Haysborough Village. An anti aircraft battery and a temporary radar station were also established here, but all traces of these have been removed. The battery buildings are moderately well preserved but are under major threat from coastal erosion. The two gun houses together with their underground magazines survive as do some of the surrounding pillboxes and spigot mortar pedestals. The east gun house has an underground passage which leads down to the magazine. During World War II Haysborough was heavily defended. In 1940 a 6 inch coastal battery was built on the cliff top but it was abandoned again in the same year when a 4.7 inch battery was built nearby. The battery was surrounded by a rectangular barbed wire enclosure. An outer barbed wire circuit included the searchlights and ancillary buildings. The two coast artillery searchlights were positioned in concrete housings recessed into the cliff top. During the Cold War the Royal Observer Corps used the site and an orlet post was built but has since been destroyed. The emergency battery was built as part of Eastern Command's coastal defences. It was constructed of brick, concrete and iron and was constructed in 1940. A temporary coastal defence chain home low radar station was built at the battery in circa 1941. In February 1943 the battery was reduced to Home Guard Manning and in April 1944 to care and maintenance. The temporary coastal defence chain home low radar station at Haysborough was built by the British Army to monitor shipping and aircraft during the Second World War. These sites opened from 1941 and comprised either a Nissan hut or brick concrete operations block with an aerial gantry mounted on the roof and a separate standby set house for the reserve power. I think it is on farm property so I've got to be careful but it is right next to the footpath oh, and it's shade as well. Look, you can see that's probably maybe a searchlight or maybe a gun, anti-aircraft or something. It's facing out to sea. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know where the tunnels are though. Ah, there by the looks of things. Oh, there's a spigot mortar there. We'll another pillbox there. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is probably dump the rucksack and go and have a look around. Ah, my legs are getting torn up by thorns and that. Pretty cool. Right, I've ditched the pack in this uh, this observation post here, and you can see where they've tried to like cover up the tunnels and stuff in there. So we're not getting through that way. But let's let's go. Let's just go and have a look around them all first, and. Uh, and then we'll come back and look at the tunnel, see if we can squeeze in them. But I'll be careful because there is a farm over there. So, oh, I mean, that's the main obvious route in. So we'll have to see. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go and have a look at this one. Let's have a look at the spigot mortar first. And then we've got that little building over there. It's the spigot mortars, they're in pretty good nick. Massive. Well, there's the track that leads down from the farm. And we've got this one here. This is pretty cool though. This one's in a bit better condition. Ah, that looks like tunnels there. I've got a head torch with me. Wow. And the graffiti, I remember my mate Hardy was telling me about that, the eyes. 
be camping here at night. <laughs> Shit you up a bit. It's pretty cool though. Looks like a corrugated iron roof with concrete laid on top and then iron girders. Right. Let's have a little look. Apparently these go quite a way down. So get the head torch on. Okay, there is a hell of a lot of rubbish down here. It absolutely stinks, it's shitty bog roll. Oh, why do I do this? Right. Oh. Oh. Jesus. Uh, spiders and stuff. Shit. Oh. Uh. Mm. It's probably the most rubbish I've ever seen. <laughs> VHS is down here. What's that? Star Wars. Look at all these moths and stuff. What if they are? That's just a small room there. There's remains of a pipe. So I believe all of this is World War II. Oh, the Nazis have been here. And, uh, and there's an entrance hole going up there. There's nothing through there. eerily quiet in here, you can't hear the sea or anything, right so much rubbish it's terrible really right, let's make our way back up outside right, that's that underground section explored let's just go and have a quick look at this little building here, it looks like a simple pillbox Stinging that old city again. Oh, oh massive cobweb. <laughs> Sorry, uh, nature lovers. Oh, I think it was dead anyway. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is just a simple brick pillbox, so he would have had riflemen. Doubt they'd have had a machine gun in this, but it was blocked off towards the uh, the landward side. Strange how the door is opening outwards to the sea, where you would have been attacked. Um, so I don't really know about that one. Hmm, strange. But someone's had a little fire in here. Yeah, there's no like sort of machine gun placement here. It's that's a strange one. Oh. Yes, that's that. Pretty cool little find though. And to see like sort of three to four structures, you know, spigot mortars, two of these observation posts, and a pillbox in one area. It must have been an important site. If you look at maps of it. It's just outside of Haysborough and it's it's got some interesting sort of sort of former track markings on the map. So I mean it could have been like a, an anti-aircraft uh, gun battery or you know like a heavy anti-aircraft battery, I'm not sure, but it's pretty cool. Anyways, final one. 
go and have a look at the, the tunnels in here if we can squeeze into them it looks pretty cramped so I might have to put some trousers on for that something to cover my head because there's a lot of animals in there and stuff if you are thinking of doing anything like this you've got to be really careful of what you're doing I mean really you should be doing this with someone else with you you know maybe someone outside you know just in case anything happens to you down there they can go and get help and stuff so don't copy my advice I'm being a bit stupid but I just really want to explore it I think I'll fit down there I'll have to see I haven't done any cardio for a while so <laughs> oh. right let's go and get some stuff out of the bag before we go in there okay I've managed to fit through that little hole in the uh, oh, in the ground there's a pair of old knickers here that I'm trying to avoid there they've bricked off that bit but this bit is open this goes quite away there we go right oh oh it's cramped down here really cramped as you're over six foot this is a lot cleaner though wow okay right let's see how that goes oh. yeah that's what i've crawled through up there it's gonna auto focus a lot because it's dark down here of course right let's explore this first room not a lot to see in here. Wow. And then look how this curves around, that's pretty cool. Wow. Okay, this goes a long, long way. Surprisingly clear though. It reminds me of like East Tilbury gun battery. That's all been sealed up, look. Chuck stuff down there. Blimey. Okay, this goes a long, long way. Ah. Oh opens out into this massive room. Now, oh, I can see my breath in the air. Now, I don't know what this, uh, these metal structures are. I don't know if they're the remains of like bunk beds, but I believe there would have been some kind of um, like soldiers quarters down here. So I've just got to watch where I'm stepping. There's loads of stuff to trip over down here. we've just come from this is mental right I'm gonna I'll go down there as well but I'm gonna look down here absolutely stings like a toilet for definite because it's uh it's got like the toilet pipe small room point two and two together there i'm not gonna lie i don't want to hang around in here too long because i'm on my own and i've got to get back out and i don't know what the air's like down here as well so yeah don't know what's down here you know there's another some look there's a pipe Let's see what's round here and then we'll retrace our steps probably oh my god there's more Jesus 
that's blocked off as well this is mental it's a small room not a lot in there really Blocked it off up this end. And then there's a room off to the left here. And, uh, don't know what I'm looking at. That looks like that could be an original wooden, I don't know, maybe World War II, who knows? But you can see how they would have had the black painting and then the white bricks way around it. Right. Yeah, it's blocked off that way. But it probably continues. There's probably even more of it, but I think for today that's all I'm going to explore. And I'll go and do my research when I get home and see if I can find anything else for you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I just, I'm looking forward to getting back out light. <laughs> it's nice and cool in here though at least. How cool is that though? Uh, we went down there, yeah. <laughs> and it's out that way. up here, I wonder if that would have been to hold lights or something, I'm not sure, oh, there we go, right, let's get back outside, <laughs> oh, back out, that was freaky, that was a little bit of a struggle, <laughs> I'm obviously getting too fat, oh, I'm so glad to be outside, <laughs> Really, really cool. Good little explore whilst on a long distance route. There must have been something like pretty substantial here. I mean, the, the sections of the tunnels that I've explored is like a fragment of it because, you know, they've whoever owns this or whatever has, has blocked off the uh, some of the, the sections of tunnel and stuff. So I think there would have been more. I mean, this must have housed a hell of a lot of troops. So there must have been something massive here. I have no idea what it is, but I'm going to try and find out. So that'll be for another time, like when I get, get back and, and start editing all of this. Um, but also, if anyone, yeah, if anyone knows about this, you know, as always, get in the comments and, and let us know, because it's pretty cool, this, anyway. Right, I'm going to carry on. I'm not far from... Haysborough now, in fact, I'm, I'm more or less there, really, it's probably half a mile with that, and that's like my first landmark of the entire trip, I just feel like I'm not making a lot of progress here, so I'm really going to get a shift on now, and I think trying to get to Winterton tonight is it's going to be really tough, I'm going to be getting there at like stupid o'clock, um, and that's if I don't stop at all. Um, as you can see I'm sort of getting a bit sunburnt now, my nose looks pretty bad um, my arms are, are getting pretty red as well and I'm, I'm putting sun cream on as well and it is just not doing it so because I didn't want too too strong a, a factor on because it just ends up like cream and you can't, your skin can't breathe and you sweat buckets so I sort of went with a, a lighter one, I think it's like I think it might even be factor 30 or something, I don't know, but it's, it's not cutting it really, so what can you do? Right, anyway, enough enough talking and let's get walking. <laughs> How creepy is this? I've come across um, an abandoned like caravan park here on the cliffs at Haysborough. The, the road just goes straight off the edge there. Coastal erosion is a thing here. Look at 
this. All the windows are smashed out. Jesus, that, is, that has been gutted. I bet you some bright low life sang around in that. And that this whole line of them. It all looks abandoned, they're all smashed up, the doors are ripped off them. There's also remains of a World War II pillbox down there. You can tell this bit of the coastline gets absolutely battered and that's probably why this has all been abandoned because of the, the cliff erosion and they know that these won't be here for long but eerie as fuck really really weird ah and there's Haysborough Lighthouse that's a famous landmark how cool is that Just see where this couple's walking in the distance there's like a wooden shed and it says office and reception so that's obviously part of the, the former caravan park we've got the frame or chassis of a static home here and it's all fenced off along this bit anyway I wonder how long this has been abandoned for it seems like not that long but it's pretty cool. It's, it's on par with the uh, the World War II stuff back there. To be fair, this is really eerie. I can imagine at night if you camped here, oh, probably give you the willies. <laughs> so I've arrived at Haysborough. It says Mundersley is six miles away. So that's what I've done today. Feels like more than that. And Sea Palling is three and a half miles. Now. From what I've seen on a lot of sites and stuff, they're saying Sea Palling is the end of the Norfolk coast path. I don't know because I'm pretty sure the county of Norfolk extends past that round to like Hopton or something, but who knows anyway. So, three and a half miles to Sea Palling, that's our next target to hit then. In 1845, a Haysborough farmer drilled a 12 acre field with wheat. That night a gale raged and by morning the field was gone. The bay at the end of this path has been created by the action of the sea and the winds. Haysborough's soft clay and gravel cliffs are vulnerable to the forces of nature and beneath the sea nearby are the remains of a second lighthouse, centuries of lost fields and the entire medieval village of Wimpwell. Towards the end of the 1950s, after a decade of dramatic erosion, steel and wood sea defences were installed at Haysborough, slowing the rate of land loss down. With the danger seemingly diminished, new bungalows and caravans appeared in great numbers on the cliff top as more people came to enjoy this beautiful coastal village. In the 1980s and 1990s, the coastal defences began to fail and the pace of erosion accelerated. People were starting to lose their homes and no compensation was on offer. A public meeting in 1999 attracted hundreds of people and saw the establishment of the Coastal Concern Action Group. It took until 2009 for central government to set up the National Coastal Change Pathfinder Programme. Amongst a suite of practical measures here at Haysborough, Pathfinder set out to create a buffer zone of open land along the clifftop. Importantly, it offered to buy some of the properties that were under threat. Haysborough's Coastal Concern Action Group is widely recognised as the driving force and inspiration behind the Pathfinder program. Today, CCAG continues to be a powerful voice nationally and internationally, seeking social justice for people who live 
on the edge. Another little pillbox just off the path here. Let's go and have a butcher's at it. There's a lot to see in this one. Very, very small. Yeah. I can't quite see round there. I'll take him off rocks over. Loads of rubbish, lovely. Yeah, it's got that distinct smell to it. I like someone's used it as a toilet. sea padding all these little like spits of sandbank jut out into the sea so it's quite open and exposed and I think it's a straight line more or less to Winterton I switch the camera on selfie mode I'm going oh shit and I'm even redder than I was, <laughs> was the last time and I put sun cream on um, anyway yeah I'm at Sea Palling and it's quite a big sort of uh, holiday resort and stuff there's loads of these like almost like reefs offshore like clumps of stones and stuff I'm guessing it's to sort of protect the beach from a uh, coastal erosion and sort of create like a calmer a calmer you know sort of section of, of water for people to paddle in and whatnot although there's a lot of like red flag warnings from the uh life uh, lifeguards that you know lifeboat people and stuff they're all out in force down there sea paddling so what i was switching the camera on to tell you about was yeah apologies i haven't filmed much i just wanted to get miles done put my foot down and go and as a result I have done that I've smashed it and it's the happiest I've been all day <laughs> I've, um, I've looked on the map and I called into my map the zigzag map that I've got it's got a little like a uh, measuring ruler with it called into that I have got three miles to Winterton where I plan on wild camping tonight up in the dunes it's a really good spot very good spot in fact it's one of the best wild camp spots I've ever found um, well Hardy showed me it and he's going to be joining me um, he, he's kindly offered to bring me some after sun which of course as you can see I need uh, three litres of water some ciders frozen get this bacon rolls with ketchup on honestly that man is he's a hero and I'll give him another shout out, Hardy Tempest Wild Camp Walks. Seriously check his channel out and subscribe. He's an absolute gen. He only lives up the road, but it doesn't matter. That's by the by. He's not camping tonight because he's got really bad sunburn on his neck and he had to be in A. He was in AE this morning or something he was saying. And uh, yeah, he's getting married on Friday, so congratulations mate. I think he's joining me for a camp tomorrow night. So where that will be, I don't know yet. So yeah, three miles to Winterton, it's five o'clock. 
even if I do a mile an hour, I'll be there at 8pm, so quids in, I'll chat to you later. Three and a half miles to Winterton on Sea. I'm at Horsey Gap Car Park. Come off of the beach from the dunes over there. It's all about the grey seals here. And not too far along this path, this is the actual kind of like inland route of the the Norfolk Coast Path, the England Coast Path. Not too far along here. I'm gonna meet be meeting up with Hardy. He's somewhere here already up in the dunes and I'm so glad to be here. I never thought I was going to get to Winston on sea tonight. I mean when you look at it on paper it's about 15 miles and I've done 15 miles before. I've done more than that before in a day but I honestly didn't think I was going to do 15 today. Okay there's another pillbox up there on the cliff. Let's go and take a little look at it shall we? as we're uh, not far from uh, meeting up with Hardy. Let's go and have a butcher's. <sighs> That's strange. The entrance to this one is on the seaward face inside. Sea's just over the, the dunes there, by the way. Oh, the usual rubbish. Questionable items of clothing. And, yep, the smell of piss. Jesus is Lord. You're damn right he is. <laughs> oh, I, I fell over <laughs> A random thing for people to graffiti. Jesus is Lord. All the seals are out. I zoom in. Look, you can see them all. And they're on this little sandbank here. Wow. There is loads of them. I think we're going to be seeing quite a few seals tonight. And you can hear them. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. I have never seen, I don't think I've actually ever seen seals before. I mean, I've seen one like poking its head up out of the, the water, but to actually see them, look, just moving across the sand is, is something else. Wow. That's amazing. Well, the people in Norfolk watching this probably think, Tom, we see grey seals all the time, mate. Get a life. I don't, not in Essex. Ah, oh, a couple of drops of rain in the air. Well, I really don't care. I've seen the seals now. That's like I'm on another, that's like being in another country to me. That's mental. One of the highlights of the walk right there. It's 7 pm, and if I zoom in, there he is. It's Hardy. Ah, oh. yes. <laughs> I'm so relieved to be here. 
Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> ah. Fancy meeting you here. Go <laughs> ahead, right, mate. You're on camera already. <sighs> Good to see you, mate. Oh, Jesus. Come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Sunburn Alley? <laughs> what the hell are you? I, I swear, our ends just touched there. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Hardy has very kindly cooked me bacon roll with ketchup. And even better, he's only bought me a couple of these frozen Rosie's Pig rhubarb cloudy cider. I've got a load more food there to cook as well and we're up in the dunes overlooking the the sea and the beach I'm in the Helm 1 at the moment just got it set up and rain's coming so I'm just sitting inside waiting it out this is lovely cheers mate you're welcome mate absolute legend right it's gone 8 o'clock I'm all set up and uh, Hardy is leaving now Cheers mate, you've been an absolute star bringing all this stuff out for us. Cheers mate. Cheers, it's been a pleasure seeing you. Um, I'm going to cook some, some dinner up now as well. Um, the bacon roll was very good, very good indeed, it was much needed. Um, yeah, so Hardy's heading off that way, I'll be heading off that way in the morning as well. And we're meeting up tomorrow as well at some point for a camp. Hardy's going to be joining me for a, a little bit of the the walk and stuff we believe definitely a camp though yeah definitely, definitely. cool beans right so yeah say goodbye <laughs> right then so it's just me now so for tonight the final sort of main meal of the French 24 hour wrap pack so it's a like a kebab risotto sort of thing there's rice like kebab style like meatballs in it I uh, can't remember what else Hardy's had it and he said it's brilliant because I was going to give this to him as a present he went no mate you've got to eat it try it um, I'm gonna have a, a chicken and vegetable uh, birani chicken and mixed vegetables with rice in a spiced curry sauce so yeah my shits are probably going to be lethal uh what else we've got this uh potato and i think it's potato and leek soup that was the french one um this tea don't know what tea it is got loads of teas um a couple of hot chocolates some more salted biscuits from the French thing to go with the, uh, the soup yeah and then once I've had all of that I'm gonna try and delve into uh, this one as well have a bit more of that and then that'll leave me with about I think four or five bags of food but a lot less so Hardy's left me with uh, about three litres of water which is absolutely brilliant he sorted me right out for this camp um, he's even fixed some of the little uh, guy lines on the guy lines sorry some of the the guy out sort of things on the tent because of course he is an expert on the helm one um he's an expert on this pitch as well he sort of said look pitch it here you'll be, be perfect it looks like you're on a dip but actually it's flat in there and he, he says like you know you'll get a a good like sunrise through there as well because if you watch any of his videos he's usually filmed them here <laughs> he won't mind me telling you so yeah, it's going to be a good night this. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be shattered. Like, I'm going to eat all this food and then he's got me two ciders there. The brilliant Rosie's Pig um, rhubarb cloudy ciders. I think they're called flat tyres. They are unbelievably good. Yeah, um, I'm in debt to him. So cheers, mate. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure seeing you as always. Yeah, anyways, enough yakking, <laughs> let's get snacking.
about half past nine now and I've I've worked my way through all the, the French ration pack stuff now and it's time to have a look at this chicken and vegetable biryani so this is from a, a British Army ration pack I think it might be menu 20 menu 20 the uh, that kebab roulette or bullet thing or something the tin I didn't like it that much even though Hardy said it was amazing it, it wasn't my cup of tea it was very dry um, didn't really have a lot of flavour to it I suppose you had to add the salt and the pepper to it although I added that to the potato and leek soup um, and added the salted crackers to it and that was really nice actually I ate all of that I made it like a, a thick soup there we go that's our curry inside that definitely looks like it's going to give me the two bob bits in the morning I can just tell oh jeez I've suddenly, suddenly lost my appetite a little bit anyway let's give it a try you know the chicken's okay yeah, it's not bad. It's better than the uh, than the French thing. Oh, I have to eat that slowly though. I think it's gone midnight now. <laughs> I've been in the tent quite a while. It started raining outside while I was just finishing up eating uh, dinner at about I think quarter to ten. So I got everything packed away, got in the tent found out I had really good 4G signal up here and started watching far too much YouTube <laughs> and I probably should get some sleep now so yeah to recap it's been a very productive day it's been a tough day I'm not gonna lie um, I've just been airing my feet out really um, you really got to look after your feet and your ankles and your calves I think with like long distance stuff any opportunity get your shoes and socks off get some air to them you know keep them clean and stuff just prevent blisters and stuff I mean at the moment fingers crossed my uh, my decathlon <laughs> walking shoes are, are doing well they're not giving me any grief or anything I broke them in before I, I used them on this trip so I've always got to break new walking shoes in of course yeah, they seem to be all right, so it's all good. Um, yeah, eating a significant amount of food tonight as well, so hopefully the pack's going to be lighter tomorrow. It's going to be another another busy day tomorrow. A um, lot of walking, hopefully not quite as much as today. So between 10 and 15 miles, I think. And I'm going to be meeting up with Hardy... I think in the late afternoon early evening hopefully we're going to get to sort of around Hopton so I think we're going to be sort of on the Norfolk Suffolk kind of border there on the coast and yeah he sort of sent me over sort of a few potential places for wild camps one of them sounds particularly good I won't tell you now you'll have to wait I'm looking forward to it, it's going to be good and it'll be good to sort of spend the last night of this trip with a good mate, you know, having a good time camping really and then I'll finish it off, hopefully, you know, get to lower stuff, finish the walk, probably Tuesday afternoon I would have thought, who knows, we'll see. Uh, I really didn't think I was gonna make it that far as well even though I've only done about 22 miles and I've probably got another 20 22 miles to go but it feels like I'm getting closer I actually feel like I'm getting somewhere with this with this walk now once I passed Haysborough I, I just felt like right I've really sort of had some momentum I think it was because I'd got to that first like milestone in my head and I was like boom that's it let's do this hopefully gonna get a good night's sleep I can hear the waves there's a sort of I 
can hear the breeze a little bit. Uh, we forecast a little bit of rain in the early hours apparently. So those two things combined will help me sleep like a log. The ciders were really good. Cheers Hardy. They went down such a treat. I was just sitting here sipping them just like this is the life. <laughs> I absolutely love this. Yeah. I'm going to get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning everyone, it's just gone 8am and I'm currently tucking into breakfast at the moment which consists of an English breakfast tea, a Nescafe coffee, a cinnamon bun, it's all from an army ration pack by the way, uh, uh, like a fruit explosion, fruit puree thing, uh, what else was there, oh yeah there was a cranberry cereal but I had that, all I've got left is the oat digestive biscuits so I'll, I'll dunk those in the, the coffee and the tea so the weather's sort of sort of overcast at the moment it's not particularly cold there's a slight breeze um, but it's, it's not really cold at all I think we forecast rain at some point today the plan is uh, to try and get to, to Hopton on Sea or just outside Hopton so got to get through Great Yarmouth um, don't want to hang around there too long I've heard bad things about Yarmouth <laughs> as people probably already know but I want to see it for myself you know it's always interesting sort of when a place gets a, re a reputation good or bad I want to just sort of see what all the fuss is about kind of like Jaywick. I've always wanted to wild camp at Jaywick by the way, completely off topic. Jaywick on the Essex coast. And uh, yeah, anyway, moving on. The only problem with today's walking, and you're gonna criticize me straight away, is I've not got any maps. No guidebook, nothing. I'm literally gonna be following the coast path signs. And, so sort of really just keeping that on my left so that could be interesting so we'll see anyway we'll see how it all pans out but I'm sure it'll be fine you know if in doubt follow your nose and yeah keep that on the left hand side you know it's, you can't really go wrong with that but we'll see anyway so I think Hardy's gonna be maybe I think he's meeting up with me at Scrapby and I think he's going to be dropping me some like some uh, printouts of maps and stuff hopefully fingers crossed it's my saviour hardy he's been absolutely brilliant <laughs> this you know like last night and stuff so yeah anyways right let's get packing up finish off breakfast and we better get a move on okay i've had breakfast i've packed everything else away it's just time to take the tent down.
Okay, it's half past nine, all packed up, got me rubbish with me, so I'll be putting this in the nearest bin. So, about 12 to 13 miles, we reckon, of walking today. So, still, still quite a bit, but not quite as much as yesterday, hopefully. So, we'll see how it goes anyway. Enough talking. Let's get walking again.